Greetings in the name of God the Father and Jesus the Son, and in the power and the presence of the Holy Spirit, our Comforter and Guide, welcome to this worship service of the First Presbyterian Church in Mount Pleasant, Texas. Today is what we call the 11th Sunday of Ordinary Time. It's the second Sunday after Pentecost. And I am John Coleman, your liturgist. Dr. Paula Wilhite is over here on the piano and organ today. Reed Williams will be leading our music, and Reverend Mark Davenport will bring us the sermon on Within the Community of Faith, taken from Romans 5. We will be continuing to worship in this way through the month of June. We had hoped that May the 31st would be our start update back here in the sanctuary, but all other things being equal, the situation, at least in our community here, in our county, the immediate surrounding area, just did not make that a wise idea. So we're going to be doing this through June, hoping that we'll be back in this sanctuary in July. So be sure and Keep your eyes on uh, the church's website, uh, the announcements that we make from here throughout the month of June, uh, and of course the, uh, anything that comes uh, about uh, through email or when, when Mark does his Facebook Lives uh, kind of in between things. We will let you know, and we will also give you some guidance on how we're going to make all of that happen when that time comes. We want to thank you for continuing to support the work of the church with your offerings and your tithes and we'd encourage you to continue to do so as we like to say the church is not closed we're simply doing church a different way uh, but some of the expenses of doing ministry uh, in the church and outside the church continue so if you would continue to be so generous with your uh, tithes and your gifts uh, that would be very much appreciated and you can always call the church and Kathy can help you with that situation so having said all that, again, welcome. We are here, you are there, but together, let us prepare our hearts and minds for worship.
Join me, please, in a word of prayer. God, most high, as we gather here to touch the unseen presence, we are moved to rejoice at your faithfulness and grace. We stand in awe before you, eager to live by faith, anticipating your mercy and giving thanks for your word. Amen. God's promises are sure. God forgives and loves us. Hear the good news. Believe the good news. In Jesus Christ, we are forgiven. Amen. Our lesson this morning from the Psalter, from the Psalms, is Psalm 116. And we will be reading the first two verses and then skip down to verse 12 and read 12 through 19. So if your Bible is nearby and you can pick it up, turn to Psalm 116, kind of right there almost in the middle. Verses 1 through 2 and then skip to verses 12 through 19. Hear now the word of the Lord for his people. I love the Lord for he heard my voice. He heard my cry for mercy. Because he turned his ear to me, I will call on him as long as I live. What shall I return to the Lord for all his goodness to me? I will lift up the cup of salvation and call on the name of the Lord. I will fulfill my vows to the Lord in the presence of all his people. Precious in the sight of the Lord is the death of his faithful servants. Truly I am your servant, Lord. 
I serve you just as my mother did. You have freed me from my chains. I will sacrifice a thank offering to you and call on the name of the Lord. I will fulfill my vows to the Lord in the presence of all his people in the courts of the house of the Lord in the midst of you, Jerusalem. Praise the Lord. And this is the word of the Lord for the people of God. Amen. Once every three years, when the summertime rolls around, the epistle readings for the lectionary encompass the letter of Paul's uh, writing to the Romans. This fills me with more joy than I can begin to describe to you. Um, so we're gonna we're gonna wade around in Romans for. The better part of this summer and see what instruction we receive from God's Spirit through the writing of the Apostle to the Roman Church and we will begin that today um, with our reading from the fifth chapter of Romans let us pray giving thanks to you O God for the gift of your holy word a word that is filled with grace and mercy and holy love. We pray for the power of your spirit to be upon us. That this word read and proclaimed would speak to us and come to life inside of us. So we ask that every voice would be silenced except your own that we might hear, and that as we hear, we will believe, and that as we believe, we will be your servants. Through Jesus Christ, who is the Lord, we offer this prayer. Amen. The epistle lesson this morning is from the letter to the Roman church, chapter 5. Our reading begins at verse 1. Hear the word of the Lord. Therefore, since we are justified by faith, we have peace with God through our Lord Jesus Christ, through whom we have obtained access to this grace in which we stand, and we boast in our hope of sharing the glory of God. And not only that, but we also boast in our sufferings, knowing that suffering produces endurance, and endurance produces character, and character produces hope, and hope does not disappoint us. Because God's love has been poured into our hearts through the Holy Spirit that has been given to us. For while we were still weak, at the right time Christ died for the ungodly. Indeed, rarely will anyone die for a righteous person, though perhaps for a good person, someone might actually dare to die. But God proves God's love for us in that while we were still sinners, Christ died for us. The Word of God. 
for the people of God. Thanks be to God. The fifth verse of the fifth chapter of Paul's letter to the Roman church is one of the richest in all of Scripture. I want you to hear it again. Hope does not disappoint us because God's love has been poured into our hearts through the Holy Spirit that has been given to us. We are the recipients of God's love and mercy. We have done nothing to deserve God. We have performed no works that have moved God to give us this love. We have been loved by God and adopted by God into God's own faithful community because God is holy love. And our relationship with God is very different than any other relationship we know. The God-human relationship formed by the actions of God and carried out in the grace of God through Jesus Christ and made real to the church in the power of the Holy Spirit should cause us to break out in joyful songs of praise. We have life. And we enjoy life because of this grace in which we stand within the faithful community. When Eugene Peterson was writing the message, his own interpretation of Holy Scripture, Peterson reached that joyful level of praise here in Romans 5. He experienced the wonderful revelation of remembering not only who he was, but whose he was. And that he shared the wonder of God's grace with all of God's sons and daughters. Peterson could not be contained in his expression of joy. He writes, We find ourselves standing where we had always hoped to stand out in the wide open spaces of God's grace and glory, standing tall and shouting our praise. We continue to shout our praise even when we are hemmed in with troubles. We can't round up enough containers to hold everything God generously pours into our lives through the Holy Spirit. Peterson knows outside this grace in which we stand, this community in which we live, we would not be standing or living at all. And all he can do in response is offer praise to God for the gift of Jesus and for the gift of God's Spirit that gives us so much that we cannot begin to contain God's love and mercy and grace. Cooper Douglas was three years old when his mom and dad and older sister Emma and younger brother Cameron got involved in the church. Now, they had been attending, stopping by every now and then, but they weren't involved, weren't connected, hadn't realized that God's Spirit was calling them to sacrifice some of their individuality for the sake of being connected within a faithful community. Well, over the course of a summer, they realized that. And the mom and dad, neither of whom had been baptized, wanted to be baptized. And they wanted their kids baptized too. And it was a joyful day to stand in front of the church and read the passage from Acts where an entire household was baptized, knowing that God was about to do that very thing in that little church. Now, Cooper had not gotten the word from everyone else that this was a good thing. When I spoke the words of baptism and poured his baptismal waters from the font onto his head, he kicked me. There was an awkward moment of silence in the sanctuary, and 
I didn't have a liturgy written with a proper response to a sudden kick from one of the baptismal candidates. And then there was a gasp or two from a couple of the older folks. And then there was a snicker from the teenagers. And then a belly laugh or two from... And then spontaneous congregation-wide laughter. The parents were a bit embarrassed, but even they couldn't contain the hilarity of what had just happened. We all laughed and celebrated around the baptismal font that day in a different but great way. That was 19 years ago. Cooper is now 22. But when he was a teenager, his mom told me that he had asked some questions about his baptism and that she had told him the entire story. She told him of the congregation promising to love him and pray for him. She told him about how his entire family was baptized on the same day. She reminded him of the little book that baptized children received from the church. It tells about the hymns and the scriptures that are sung and read that day and why baptism is so important in the life of the church. She told him stories about the dear lady, Frances Murray, the one who had given the family the cross-stitching with the date of their baptism that hangs on the wall in their house. She even told him he kicked the pastor. Cooper listened intently, she said, and then said, it sure seemed like they got a lot of stuff from people and that a lot of people had promised to take care of them. And he wondered if the family had done anything to deserve all of that. Why did people love them so much, care about them so much, and do so much? He asked, did the pastor get mad because I kicked him? And whether or not he got into trouble when he got home, because he allowed, he probably should have. His mom answered all his questions. And then Cooper said, that seems like a weird day. What I didn't deserve I got. And what I did deserve, I didn't get. Cooper has stumbled, kicked his way into the richness of grace. All of us, every last one of us, exist in the beauty, wonder, and great mystery of God's grace that is too much for us to grasp, understand, or contain. Yet, from the moment God claims us in baptism and gifts us the presence of the Holy Spirit, we are set in motion to discover the beautiful senselessness of God's providence and mercy. God is inescapable. God is everywhere, and the benefit of God's grace given to us in our creation, our salvation, and our calling as disciples of Jesus are available to help us serve in Jesus' kingdom. Maybe that's why Paul felt it was important to talk about how the peace and the hope of God as a gift from God through the life, death, and resurrection of Jesus and made real in our lives as God's Spirit is generously poured out on us, transforms our lives and our daily living. As children of God, graciously accepted and loved by God, every experience we have throughout our days offers us a chance to respond in grace to the world around us and the people around us. We face nothing, encounter nothing that can remove God's peace that lives in us.
so, as Paul will so poetically write later in Romans that we will read on an upcoming Sunday soon, we boast in suffering because suffering produces endurance and endurance produces character and character produces hope. And hope does not disappoint us because hope comes from the very essence of God's being. And all of this is the language of grace. And the language of grace is intended to build relationships that are made known within the faithful life of a community. Just take a second to remember the times of sorrow and sadness and grief and separation that has spilled out in our country and in our world these past months. Remember the anxieties, the worries, the upheaval to our routines and to our customs. Think of those who have suffered and who have died and who have lost jobs and possessions. And remember all of those who have sacrificed and served beyond the limits of their salaries beyond the limits of their time. Because we need to remember too that at every turn of the road, sorrow and sadness and grief have been met by the faithful expressions of love and mercy and grace from one to another to another to another because we live in hope through faith within a faithful community, adopted sons and daughters of a loving, grace-filled God who gives us the uncontainable gifts of life that we hold in trust with and for each other. Those gifts of life are present in every prayer offered, every text message sent, every word of thanks spoken, every phone call that is dialed, every card that is mailed, and every visit that it was possible to make. We are God's people. Made right with God through Jesus Christ, and we can live at peace with God and each other as we share the abundant riches of God's grace, knowing as we faithfully live our lives as followers of Jesus, God's Spirit will cause us and use us to bring good news wherever we go and whatever we do. The Apostle Paul also wrote these words. We are children of God. And if children, then heirs, heirs of God and joint heirs with Christ. I consider that the sufferings of this present time are not worth comparing with the glory about to be revealed in us. For in hope we are saved. And since we are justified by faith, we have peace with God through our Lord Jesus Christ, through whom we have obtained access to this grace in which we stand. within the faithful community. A community of God's beloved children.
from east and west and north and south and all points and places in between. Nothing can separate us from the love of God made known to us in the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ. Thanks be to God. In the name of the Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. response to the hearing and the understanding and the living out of God's holy word as proclaimed, let us affirm together our faith. I believe in God, the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, and in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Ghost, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, dead, and buried. He descended into hell. The third day he rose again from the dead. He ascended into heaven and sitteth on the right hand of God the Father Almighty. From thence he shall come to judge the quick and the dead. I believe in the Holy Ghost, the Holy Catholic Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. Let us pray. All praise and honor belong to you, O God, creator of the universe, giver of of life. You are our Redeemer and our Sustainer, and your grace and mercy fill us up and carry us through. with humility and gracious thanksgiving. We come before you in prayer today, asking for the gift of your spirit to freshly wash upon us, that we may see as you see, that we may love as you love. We ask you to heal our land, to bring us to an awareness of what we share in common instead of a desire to further escalate what divides us. We pray for you to show us your way and that we will not rest until we follow that path. We pray that your love would be made evident through us and into the lives of everyone we meet, whether it is someone who lives within the same walls that we live, someone who works with us, someone who takes our order at a restaurant or checks us out at a grocery store. May your spirit have invaded us so 
that they would see your love and kindness, your mercy and grace in our actions and hear them through our words. Help us, God, to stand in this grace which you have given us for the purpose of giving it to other people. We pray now for those who are sick, for those who are grieving, for those who are lonely, for those who are depressed. For those searching to find their way. Help us, God, to help them. That's what Jesus did. And if we claim his name, then let us too follow his way. We have confidence in Jesus as our Savior and as our Lord. And it is in this confidence that we now pray as he has taught us saying, Our Father, who is in heaven, hallowed be your name. Your kingdom come, your will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our debts as we forgive our debtors. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For yours is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever. We have peace with God. We have that peace through Jesus Christ. Because that peace lives in us, we can be at peace with one another. So go from this place seeking to be a peacemaker. And whatever you do, whatever you say, do it out of love. The gift that binds everything together in perfect time. May the grace of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the communion of the Holy Spirit rest and abide with you and yours, now and forever.